coming up in the near future. Today we have David Grissom. David is an automation specialist uh, in our DFW location uh, for the Reynolds company. And, uh, and he's being assisted by Adil Saeed. Uh, Adil is with Rockwell Automation and he's a territorial, uh, territory business lead. Uh, both of these guys uh, deal with uh, MCCs and power products. So with that, I'll hand it over to David Grissom. Thank you, Mark. Go ahead and progress to the next slide. Uh, we're, today we're going to talk about the E3 and E3 plus overload relay, which uh, will probably be the, the larger part of our discussion. And we'll talk about the future uh, migration for the E1 plus. Uh, next slide. This is just showing the introduction to the E300. Uh, is what it's going to look like. Uh, next slide. The, uh, okay, uh, DeviceNet, as Mark said earlier, was the first network that Rockwell uh, had that was for uh, industrial devices be, to be connected to a network. It was also Rockwell's first intelligent MCC offering. The, MC, the uh, E3 Plus was the original solution for the networked MCCs. They introduced this product over 20 years ago. I believe they started selling it in 1999. The Rockwell, the uh, Rockwell path, suggested path, would be to go to the next generation E300, and I'll introduce that relay to you shortly. For the E3 Plus, in October of 18, it was announced the end of life, and then the discontinued date was October of 2019. Next slide. This is kind of our migration options for an E3 or an E3 Plus. The E3 Plus was device net only. Um, as customers started adopting Ethernet to uh, Ethernet over to device net, the E3 Plus was still device net, so we had to use a 2100 E net. And I'll show you that in a slide here in a few minutes where that 2100 E net would sit. And uh, the 2100 E net was the uh, Ethernet adapter to link the E3 Plus to Ethernet. The functional differences between the uh, E300 and the E3 Plus, uh, they're basically, they, they basically provide the same current sensing abilities. Um, the only thing you're going to see a physical difference, it's about a half inch taller, which is going to present a little bit of a problem when you're trying to retrofit this into an existing MCC bucket. There'll be a, uh, a photo that will show you that here in a few minutes. With the E300, though, we do pick up Ethernet IP and uh, device net on the unit. Some of the other options for migration would be an, e, uh, an E1 Plus, uh, which is going away next year, and then, uh, and then moving over to an E100 overload relay. Um, and we'll talk about the E100 later in our presentation. Next slide. This is the introduction to the E300. It is a uh, component style overload relay. Uh, you basically order the pieces and parts to put this thing together. And uh, it, uh, like I said a while ago, it is available on Ethernet, device net. There is a standalone version that's not networked. It's called the E200. Um, we will not cover that in this presentation. If you want more information on the E200, we'll, we'll be more than happy to send that to you. Uh, we have, uh, here's all the different I.O. options for it. It has expandable I.O. as well. And then we have different sensing options. Uh, we can sense current only, current or current and ground fault, or voltage current and ground fault. And then there's the different current ranges. Next slide. When a customer buys an E300 to replace a uh, E3 plus overload relay, you're actually going to be purchasing three parts. Uh, the sensing module is the base goes on the back panel. The control module will plug into the top of that. That's where your I/O would res reside. And then the communication module snaps on the top. It's, uh, it's like Legos with keepers. As you stack this thing up, you've got clips that actually hold all the pieces together. The reason we ship this thing in parts instead of shipping you one complete assembled overload relay is because we use the same communication module and control modules throughout the uh, product offering. The sensing module changes. Uh, we have two different control modules based on whether or not you've got, you're, you're trying to do any kind of ground fault detection. 
And then the sensing modules, uh, we have the three sensing modules and it, it helps you reduce, if you're gonna try to keep this thing in stores, it's gonna help you reduce the, par the number of parts that you gotta keep in stores to support a wide range of overloads. Um, it also supports 54 pre-configured operating modes uh, for overload, non-reversing starters, reversing starters, wide delta, two-speed starters, etc. Next slide. Uh, dimensional differences. Uh, you'll see that they are the same length and width. Uh, I will point out on the left side picture, if you'll notice the location of the I.O. block on the E300, it's a lot lower than the I.O. block on the E3+. Plus. I'll show you that in a picture here in a few minutes while that's going to become an issue. And then uh, the bottom right hand picture shows the E3 is taller. It would be taller in the bucket than a uh, E3+. Plus. Next slide. Okay, this is Rockwell's stance on low voltage motor control centers when you're converting an E300 to the, or, or when you're converting an E3 plus to an E300. Due to the increased depth of the E300, the clearance between the face of the E300 to the door is extremely close. The door will still close and you still do get some clearance, it's close. So uh, if, you have a, if you have an old reset button or anything like that, we would have to abandon that because there's no way it would close. Uh, Rockwell recommends to replace the entire unit with a new unit containing an E300. Uh, the size comparison on the right shows the E3 plus sizes for uh, size one, size two, and the E300 size. You'll see that for the E300, we can actually, as we get into the uh, size three and size four uh, starters, uh, we can actually get a size three starter in a, in a one and a half space where uh, with the E3 and the E3 plus, that was a uh, two space for a size three and a two and a half space for a size four. So depending on the options that are included with the buckets, you can get those a little bit smaller than, than what you already have today. Save you a little bit of space. Next slide. This is my busy slide and I will uh, talk you through some of the points. Um, there are, okay, the overload mounting. You'll see the E3 plus overload mounting on the right side and the E300 on the left side. The E300 on size one and size two contactors is mounted perpendicular to the starter. And we do that because of that IO terminal block that I talked to you about earlier. Some of the customer complaints that we used to get with the E3 and the E3 plus was how close that bottom IO terminal block is on that right hand side of that picture. The, the uh, I one that bottom right, uh, IO terminal block is really, really close to the bottom of the bucket. We had a lot of customers that were concerned about that and uh, talked to us about how that was difficult to wire in the field if they had to make any wiring changes. So Rockwell turned that overload relay 90 degrees and now you've got direct straight on access to the IO block the ethernet connections or a device net connection, and then the, uh, the motor power leads. Networking, we talked about the, uh, the 2100 ENET earlier. In order to get an E3 plus on ethernet, we had to add this nice gray box called a 2100 ENET. Um, that allowed the customers to, uh, to get the device net overload relay and talk to the ethernet network. Um, with the E300 overload relay that is resident onto, on, the, uh, on the overload relay itself. The wiring. Um, the wiring can be real busy on these things because we, uh, we got a lot of things that we can do with it with IO and, and auxiliary contacts and such. Uh, so the wiring on the, between the E3 and the E300 um, would be a, a few changes. You can see on the E3 plus on the right hand side, we have no top uh, terminal IO terminals. And on the E300, we've got IO terminals on both, on both ends of that uh, uh, overload relay. So we would have to look at that as a consideration. I believe there's one more, the CPT. The uh, fuse blocks for the control circuit transformer in order to make this thing, the E300 fit, they go to a single uh, three pole fuse block. Um, and then uh, for, especially for an E1, if you have an E1 plus overload relay, 
the uh, for the E1 overload relay, you would have a 40 volt fuse block and the 120 volt fuse block on either side of the overload relay. Those would have to be relocated. And on the E3 overload relay, those are looks like they're on the back panel. Oh, and um, hold on, Mark. Go back one second. The E300, once you get a bit of beyond a size 2 contactor, the E300 would go back to being a direct mount. So for a size 3 and a size 4 and a size 5 across the line starter, reversing starter, the E300 would actually be direct mounted to the uh, contactor again. Okay, next slide now. This is a, a functional comparison of the E3 Plus I.O. to the E300 I.O. Uh, you can see the E3 Plus uh, was four inputs, two outputs, and the standard for 24-volt DC control, our standard uh, control module is six, six inputs and three outputs. The E3 Plus, when you had ground fault detection, the I.O. count did not change. For an E300, if you have a ground fault detection, you would actually have four and two. So when you add the ground fault, you're going to lose an output and you'll lose a couple of inputs. And I'll show you that, I believe, on the next slide. A couple of slides down then. Um, these are a couple of different options. So with the E3 Plus, you were using a legacy control station. So you were using um, pilot lights, push buttons, selector switches. With the E300, we pick up these two options. We've got a standard control station, and you've got the buttons that have one and two on them and then zero. So you could use the same control station to, to do an across-the-line starter, reversing starter, two-speed starter. You can actually do local remote and you've got stop and the reset all in one unit. The uh, diagnostic station on the side actually gives you a view into the parameters, so you can actually monitor some of the parameters um, on the E300 without actually having to open up the door. A lot of, if, in order to see a lot of this stuff on an E3 Plus, if you didn't have pilot lights in the door, you would actually have to open the unit to see this. Next slide. The E300. Uh, network connectivity for Ethernet IP. It has two Ethernet ports that operate as an Ethernet switch. Uh, because we have the two Ethernet ports, we can either do star topology, linear topology, or uh, device level ring. It's got an embedded web, web server. It supports ADC, automatic device configuration. And then there's a, there's a picture of the web server there. And um, you can program it with Studio 5000. Next slide. For customers that want to interface this back to their factory talk view, uh, it also comes with pre-configured operator faceplate objects, and this is just a demonstration of what those would look like. You can have device status and maintenance, device I.O. and trending, different options for being able to view some different things. That's through Factory Talk View Studio. DeviceNet communications. For customers that are still using DeviceNet or DeviceNet MCCs, uh, we do have a DeviceNet uh, adapter for the E300. I will point out it, will, it uses RS networks for DeviceNet support. Um, you can still use ADR. So if you've got E3 pluses on a DeviceNet network that are being reprogrammed with ADR, uh, we can still do that with this unit. And then with the E3, uh, E300, we can actually put the E300 in emulation mode. And that, that will emulate the E3 plus overload relay and let you reuse the configuration parameters uh, to, for the device. And I'll show you that here in a slide or two. Next slide. Considerations for the device net adapter. Uh, you must use RS networks for device net version 27 or later. For Studio 5000, the minimum version is going to be version 20. You must configure the device net drivers using RS links before they're available on RS networks. Uh, there's a link uh, that we can provide you for downloading the uh, EDS files. Um, I will note that when you're operating an E300 and an emulated E3, E3 plus mode, the outputs are non-configurable. 
So there'll be, uh, there were the IO on the E3 plus operated in a certain fashion. And when you put an E300 in emulate mode, you're going to see that the, the IO is going to match what you had on the E3 plus. Next slide. This talks about emulation mode. Um, for a customer that is looking to buy a bucket from Rockwell that has an E300 in it and they want to put this into a device net motor control center, you can actually get the E300 with a dash 18M suffix on the bucket. That dash 18M, the factory will actually ship the bucket uh, wired and the parameters set for E3 plus emulate so that you can just take this bucket, plug it in, you take the bucket, plug it into your device net MCC, Plug the, uh, the device net cable into it, power it up, and it will, uh, the E300 will look and act on the network like the E3 Plus did. Internally, the E300 will remap the E300 parameters to match the parameter numbers of the E3 Plus like we talked about a little bit earlier. The E300 boots up in, as a uh, E3 Plus version 6, and, and the, uh, the actual E3 Plus stopped developing firmware at 5. Next slide. I talked about the I.O. mapping and emulation mode. This is an example of that. You can see the outputs that were on the E3 and the E3 Plus and how they would be mapped for the E300. And then the output data as it relates to the E300 there. And this is all available over RS Networks for DeviceNet. Uh, you'll also see the diagnostic station uh, that's in the upper right-hand corner the E3 Plus will actually display that it is in emulation mode when, when, you're, when you're using the overload relay in this fashion. Next slide. Uh, Rockwell will, will program this. This is, just, this is a partial list of all the different profiles available for the E300 in emulation mode. So you can see on the, on the left-hand columns, the, depending on which E3 overload relay you had, you've got parameter 300 that's on the right-hand side of the page. Parameter 300, you would actually set that parameter to match. So when you set the parameter 300 value, you would actually, uh, you're teaching the E300 what it is supposed to emulate. So it will emulate any of the overload relays on the left-hand side of the page. Next slide. This is an example. Uh, there's a migration guide available for the E300, to, uh, for the, from the E3 plus to the E300. Uh, the migration guide is in the bottom left-hand side of the page. It goes over all of the details for migrating from an E3 Plus to an E300. Some of the notes that you probably want to make note of whenever you're going through there, uh, similar to what you would see on a migra migration guide for a component class drive, you're going to see some of the same things here. It also has a comparison inside this guide that would give you all of the different uh, protective features of the different E3 and E3 plus overload relays and then what you would get on a standard E300 overload relay. Next slide. Some of the supporting information. Uh, we've got uh, technical documents, a quick start guide, there's a user's manual out there. Uh, Rockwell has published a lot of different videos on this if you have an E300 on device net in emulation mode. Uh, entering emulation mode, uh, backup restore of parameters. Uh, there's a highlight reel out there. Next slide. I think there's three slides on supporting information. The one thing I'll point out on this is the E300 overload relay copycat feature. Uh, there, that's an article out there that talks about how you would copy the parameters from an E300 and be able to download to uh, new, another bucket that may have an E300 in it. Next slide. MCC publications regarding the E300. Um, there's a device net MCC technical document. The uh, current selection guides and the program guides all reflect the E300. Uh, they have dropped the E3 plus from the selection guides and programming guides. Um, again, the user's manual technical documents and the knowledge base article that is uh, actually talks directly to an E300 operating in emulation mode. Uh, it shows the I.O. mapping that I, that I showed you earlier. Next slide. Now we're going to talk briefly about the E1 Plus to E100 uh, migration. 
this is not uh, something that's urgent today, and I'm not going to talk about all of the feature sets of the E100 because David Aldridge will have a presentation on June 3rd that will talk about uh, the E1 Plus to E100 migration as a component level product more in depth. Next slide. We had a couple of different options on the E1, and uh, we had the E1 and the E1 Plus. Uh, Rockwell and motor control centers only use the E1 Plus. The E1 Plus gave us a selectable trip class. Uh, you'll see that in December 2019, we had an end of life announcement, and it is scheduled to be discontinued in April of 2021. I say scheduled because with all discontinuation notices, it is based on product availability. So if factory runs out, of any of the E1 Plus overload relays, then we're going to be forced to switch over to an E100. Um, the E1 Plus was introduced uh, over 18 years ago. All right, next slide. The E100, it would be a direct, it, it is a form fit and almost completely functional uh, replacement for the E1 Plus. I will note that you had the E1 Plus did have Ethernet and DeviceNet sidecars that were available. So you could actually get some basic parameters, monitoring parameters and, su and such on a uh, E1 Plus over Ethernet or DeviceNet. The E100 will not have any communications option at this time. There are plans to provide uh, subnet type network connectivity for the, uh, for the E100 and on, at, at a future release. So Rockwell's stance on this path forward for the E1 Plus to E100 for a standalone application without networks, the E100 will provide the latest technology for the basic overload. It's, it will look and act the same way the E1 Plus did. For any networked application, both internet and device net, the ethernet and device net, the E300 overload will be uh, the, the, the only option really for us moving forward. Oh, this is also going to be the E100 will also be the overload relay for customers that were still using the heater element style overload relays, the thermal overload relays. Uh, those have also been removed from the catalog and they are not available for sale today in a brand new MCC bucket. So if you ask us for a heater style overload relay, we will be quoting you and shipping you an E100. Next slide. Same thing with the E1, the E3 Plus to uh, E300. We also have a migration guide available for the E1 Plus to E100. Uh, this is just showing a display. It, it talks about the different E1 Pluses that were out there and conversion notes, anything like that. And then there's a, there's a uh, part number for the uh, RA publication. Next slide. Our supporting information. I uh, have technical, uh, techn technical documents, user's manuals, new installation instructions, and then uh, Rockwell will be coming out with videos in the near future. Next slide. I believe that's it. That's it. Any questions? I, do I don't see anything in chat. Any questions in the chat window? Uh, thank you, David. I pre we appreciate that. Um, and I invite uh, anyone that has questions on legacy MCCs or the components that are inside of those MCCs uh, to, co to consult with your Reynolds company account manager or your Rockwell sales engineer on, uh, on migrating to newer products. Uh, as David was saying, DeviceNet is, uh, is uh, products are no longer being offered or they're being discontinued uh, and everything is converging upon ethernet. So uh, please consult us if you have any questions on migrating uh, MCCs or any other legacy product in your facility. And with that, uh, that is the end of this meeting. And thank you for attending and we look forward to seeing you on another Tech Talk in the future. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.